Coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, founding member and drummer for the rock band King's X, Jerry Gaskin. And now, Rich Redman. What is up, rock and rollers? That's right. We're clapping our hands. We're super excited today. What's happening out there in podcast land? It's it's that time. It's time for another exciting episode of the Rich Redman Show, where we talk about all things music, motivation, and success. I talk to musicians, drummers, comedians, actors, thought leaders. We're having a ball here. And today, you guys are really in for a treat. This is long overdue, but today's guest is a drummer. He's a singer. He's a songwriter. He's a founding member of the celebrated rock band King's X for not one, not two, not three, over four decades, along with his bandmates, Doug Pinnock and Ty Tabor. Hey, check this out. VH1 ranked these guys number 83 on the 100 greatest rock artists of hard rock. Their music mixes metal, funk, soul, gospel, blues, and British Invasion sounds. And today, our guest is Jerry Gaskell. How are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. After all of that, how could I not be good? <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a Hollywood <laughs> intro. I mean, we're just missing the low timpani. <laughs> um, <laughs> right on. So, so uh, I'm originally an East Coast kid, and now you're living on the East Coast. But that's not your roots. Your roots were, am I right in saying you were from Springfield, Missouri? Or where you were you are born? Not right in- where were you born? I will tell you. I was born in a little town in southern Jersey. Oh, okay. Called Britain. And I lived there the first 20 years of my life. And from there, I moved to Springfield, Missouri. Okay. So and you I- are kind of an East Coast guy. I'm a total East Coast guy. That, that's where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up there. I left there when I was 20. Moved to Springfield, Missouri. And that's where I met Ty and Doug. Amazing. Amazing. And I was in Springfield, Missouri. Then we moved to Houston, Texas in 1985, and things kind of took off from there. And that's why sometimes we're known as a Texas band. Yes, because w- this is really funny. This is why I feel like this interview and us connecting and catching up really in a public forum is so overdue because I met you in Houston. You guys were um, guests on this rock radio station in Houston, and I was competing in the guitar center drum off and yes, I, I was a judge you were a judge and i was a judge yes and thank you for uh for for passing me along because i got to go to hollywood and stay in a, and stay in the la quinta on sunset boulevard and go to the house of blues and compete with all these other drummers if you know competition drum solos competition and music i don't know if it's it's more of a sports thing but it, i was so excited to go and, you know, there was this a little 11-year-old kid um, who ended up winning, and he went on to be the drummer with Jay-Z. At the time, he was just like, yeah, I'm going to start with the helicopter. And I'm like, oh, that, that's cute, kid. Um, and then he moved on to, you know, he now he's a, a, like, a, like a big celebrated drummer. You never know. Wow. You just never know. About- but it, it was so cool to meet you that day. And um, even before that, I was I went to college in Lubbock, Texas, um, Ski Lubbock um, at Texas Tech University. And you guys played around 91, 92 at a place called the Depot Warehouse. I don't even know if you remember the venue. Probably gets all blurry. Yeah. But you know about that. <laughs> yeah. I had a sight singing exam in the morning where they call it sight screaming, where you have to do solfege, do, re, mi. And I knew I needed to pull an all nighter to stay up to prepare for it. And but I really wanted to come see you guys. So I had a college professor and he said, Rich, don't let college get in the way of your education. And so the light bulb moment when I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I want to see Jerry. I want to steal all of his licks. I'm going. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Uh, did you find a steal? I passed it. I passed the exams, you know, probably by the hair of my chinny chin chin. But it was so great to see you guys. It was just like so much power and energy in this huge sound coming from three individuals really incredible man so did you find anything to steal from me oh yes i like the uh (laughs) well at the time you know i was playing a lot of zing da ga ding ga ga ding and thinking about learning to play fusion music and maybe smooth jazz and maybe move to la 
So I don't even know if I could fully appreciate it at the time, but looking back, once you start to mature and people are yelling at you over the years, you're rushing, you're dragging, your groove's not deep enough, you're too loud, you're too soft. It's like <laughs> your groove is so natural. It's so thick. It's so deep. I mean, you wear your heart on your sleeve and, you know, and also that night you did some, you know, the uh, two in the hand, two in the feet. And what's the song where you guys, I mean, I should know this because I was just totally just living with your music for the last week, but, um, and God, oh, and God, uh, God, 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 where there's all that space. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. What song is that? Remind me. It's called We Were Born to Be Loved. Amazing. So how did you guys come up with that, those figures and all the space? Because I swear you guys are so tight. You don't even look at each other. And then it's, you're, I mean, it's so impressive. It's almost like there's a click happening in the universe somewhere on the stage. But yeah, yeah. it's a funny thing. I mean, it, it is, there is a certain time, of course, that it's played in, but we do it really by feel. Come on. You know, we, 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 we do, I mean, th we, there's a time, yes. And when we put it together, we were almost kind of trying to be silly to come up with those really ridiculous things to put there, that, you know, ridiculous whatever. And it's just gotten to the point now where we just feel it. We just know when we're going to hit it. It might not be perfectly in time. Maybe it is. I don't know. But we're feeling where everybody's going to hit. That's why we don't have to look at each other because we just feel it. <laughs> I mean, that is a testament to something you can't get around the blood, the sweat, the tears, the smell of diesel fuel riding down the highway and the bus sleeping on the airport floors for decades i mean these these guys are your brothers they're your family man that is it's really Absolutely. it's a rarity this um that kind of a commitment to a cause to each other it just doesn't happen anymore it's such rarefied air mm. yes it's it's it, yes we've been together many many years and we're like family like you said we're like brothers you know and uh a lot of love and hatred in, in families, right? <laughs> now, are you guys? Do you guys live all over the country, and then you maybe fly to the first show or fly to rehearsals? Is that how it works? That is how it works. We haven't played together or even seen each other since uh, January of two thousand twenty. Wow! Wow! How how has your pandemic been? I tell you, I think I got more PTSD from this thing than any other. Uh, event in my life because I'm such a social person. I mean, it has really gotten to me. Well, I'll have to say, I kind of like the pandemic. You know, I got to stay home all the time. Right. And I like, I don't need to travel. I don't need uh, to be around people. I'm not that social person like you say you are. Yeah. I don't need that, but I enjoy it when I'm there and I make the best of it. And it's, you know, a fun, wonderful thing. But I got to stay home and just record music and do whatever I wanted to do, whenever Amazing. I wanted to do it. Yeah. And that's how I want to live. And most of the time, I just want to be home. I love that. So I love go. that. I'm, I'm hoping there's a time in my life. Um, yeah, I do fantasize at a time in my life where I can, you know, have like a track suit with a partner and we have matching track suits and we go out in the neighborhood and walk our vanilla and chocolate <laughs> pugs and say hi to the neighbors. <laughs> You know, <laughs> good luck with that one. <laughs> I know we're just always on the go so much. Um, so, so, anyways, I just wanted to to just remind you how we connected all those decades ago, and I and I and I've been a fan, and it was great this week to reimmerse myself in this massive body of work that you guys have. So, speaking of relationships, well, you know, I've been, say one thing, I've been. Let me say one thing real quick. Let me say one thing. Yeah, real yeah. Quick. You brought up the fact that I was a judge. Yeah. A contest you're in, yeah. Because one of my favorite things to say to people before they go on stage is, "Hey, I just want you to remember when you're up there, just know that I'm out here judging you." <laughs> <laughs> right. I just think that's hilarious. It's but anyway, good. I, I should have brought a splashable over here. <laughs> um, so as you're saying, yeah, I was just thinking about relationships. You know, I'm I've been playing with the same group of guys for like. 24 years and we finish each other's sentences it's a pretty pretty powerful thing that you can't there's no shortcut to and it's so uh satisfying to travel the world with these guys and to be on stage because i've been on stage with colleagues or thrown together bands or work for hire bands and it's just not the same thing um 
So speaking of that, when you guys first started out, there was like a, it was almost like you guys were like side men in various organizations. You like almost joined Petra and then you played with Phil Kagi. Am I right in these, these, in my fact checking here? That is correct. Yeah. Doug and I met uh, when he moved to Springfield, Missouri to join Petra. Yeah. Which never, it just never happened. And uh, we were playing with a guy named Greg Voles, who ultimately was the lead singer for Petra. And he felt bad, I think, because the whole thing fell apart. And he called his friend Phil Kagi and said, hey, I've got this rhythm section. I think we should get together and play. And we ended up touring with Phil Kagi, which was absolutely incredible. And yeah. it was from there, that Doug and I realized, hmm, this is not really the place we need to be. We're kind of, it's kind of at the height of the Christian world. Mm -hmm. And we were like, hmm, not where we need to be. So we formed a band. And yeah, it became King's X. Yeah. Incredible. Thank God that happened. Um, yeah, Nashville is uh, crazy because this is kind of like 99% of Christian rock is recorded in Franklin, Tennessee by like a handful oh. of producers. <laughs> the crazy thing is I've been here nearly 25 years and I do not cross paths with these people there in some other fraternity and they hang out at other places. I never see them. You know, it's crazy. Right. The Christian world is a very different kind of world. It's a yeah. world of its own. It's a, yeah. Totally. So you guys said, this is not for us. We're going to do our own thing. And then you connect with Ty, right? And then boom, the it comes together. Yeah. Yes. And it's funny because we all played in different uh, configurations of a band together, but never all three of us together. Like I played with Doug. Doug had played with Ty. I played with Ty. And then finally we just thought, hey, why don't we just become a band? Yeah. And therefore we did. Yeah. Very smart. Yeah. And then that now you came from a musical family, right? Your brother and your father, and you guys even had a band together. Tell us a little bit about that. And what was the first yeah. spark? Like why the drums? Well, I don't know why the drums. The drums are just something I've always done. I don't ever remember thinking, oh, I think I want to play drums. But I do. A, a very, very early memory is going to a friend or a cousin I don't know, it was an older person, and they had a drum set in their basement, and I was completely attracted to it. And I remember getting my very first real drum when I was four years old, and that, that, that was the most important thing in life to me. That's all that I wanted was a real drum. Yeah. And when I was four, I got that. My dad, I'll tell the story real quick. I've told it many sure. times, but I like to yeah. mind. Oh, absolutely. Please. But, uh, four years old. Nothing meant more to me in all of life than having a real drum. And my dad went to the store to get me a snare drum, a really nice Ludwig snare drum. Right. And he went by himself. He comes home and he goes, oh, Jerry, I'm really sorry, but I just wasn't able to get it. And I remember profusely crying. It's like I couldn't contain it. I was just crying to the point where I could, ah, it was the worst thing that could ever have happened. And, he said, and then he says, could you go out to the car and get my, get something for me? He said, get my, I think he smoked cigarettes at times. He said, could you go get my cigarettes or whatever he said? So I did it obediently as I, as a child. <laughs> and there sitting on the front seat was the, was the drum. Oh. Greatest thing. Greatest so thing he, ever. he was kind of a, was he a prankster? Was that he, that was kind of like a cruel joke. <laughs> kind of cruel, but, but the end result was beautiful. It sure was. Yeah. So you got the first then, drum. There, yeah. And from there, he realized that this is really what I wanted to do. Yeah. And when I was about seven, I think we formed the band with my dad and my brother because he knew that I wanted to play. And uh, it was an all instrumental band, just my dad, my brother and me. We played all kinds of different gigs, weddings, floats, uh, yeah. parties, whatever. And uh, we called ourselves Jerry and the Knights. That's awesome. With yeah, a night like a K K N I K N I G H K N I G H yes yep that's it that's the story oh. of Jerry the Knights <laughs> I love that and yeah I do love the story of how you and so was Ringo your was a night you know 1964 Ed Sullivan was that the thing was that even before that I was playing right and but when I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan that was that was it yeah just like so many of maybe even you too. I don't know yeah. if you saw him on his song. 
Did you? I didn't see. I didn't see it because um, I was born in seventy. But yeah, it was happened. Yeah, still it feeling that actually, ripple effect, you know. Yeah, but that was it. Yeah, Ringo. That's that's where it starts, man. Right? Yeah. Then and from so there, what, John. Bo oh, John Bonham. Yeah, because you, I could definitely hear those things because there's a swing to your playing. There's a bounce to your playing. It's almost like Gene Krupa's in there. And the way you, Buddy Rich. Buddy Rich, the way yeah, you way the way you dance on your throne, and it's and it's almost like you don't you don't you're not up here. You get a huge sound, but you it's it's very controlled. But it's it's musical. I mean, it's just great. What, whatever you got going on back there, I mean, it's obvious that it's working. <laughs> Thank you, man. It's it's a uh, it's all um, mirrors and. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 3D oh, wow. kind of stuff. It's not, oh, it's not a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so was there any training or did you just play along with records? None of the above. No training. Really? I didn't play with records. I just, I've just always played whatever I feel. Yeah. You know, whenever I try to play something like somebody else, it never came out that way. It always came out sounding like me. Right. So I just never did that. No training at all. I mean, that's just like a, that's just like the hand of your higher power right on your shoulder there, just going, you've got this. This is your purpose. This is how you're going to affect people in life. Yes. Sometimes I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's just the way it is. But it's got, to where it got me to where I'm at. I guess that's good. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we still haven't perfected this Zoom thing. It's like the, just the little lag is just a real vibe killer I, sometimes, man. <laughs> I hate that. Like talking to somebody in the UK or something. Yeah, it's uh, but it's amazing that we can reach out and we can connect with people from across the world. Just the, the world. They say that the world is the technology is going to increase in the next ten years more than the last hundred. The Rich Redmond Show will be right back. Are you a drummer looking to expand your drumming vocabulary or take your career to the next level? You can connect with me for one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons and consultations that are now 30% off. I cover topics like styles, reading music, the Nashville number system, charting, music business 101, and career guidance. Simply send me an email at booking at richredmond.com to schedule. And for more information on all of my products and services, visit richredmond.com. This is the Rich Redman Show. I'm just afraid of the robots and everything. You know, I mean, it's right around the corner. I'm afraid of Siri. I'm afraid of Alexa. See, I'm not too afraid anymore because I'm getting so old. I'm not going to be around for a lot of it anyway. <laughs> oh, stop, stop. Well, talk, well you, had, you had a little bit of a scare in 2012 and 2014. And us here, the drumming community in Nashville, we rallied around you. I think we raised some money. It was an amazing thing because, well, you know, and it's... It, we paid we paid tribute man all the best drummers in nashville got to do their best imp impersonation of you in tribute to you and since then um diet and exercise was that a thing that kind of evolved and uh, changed for you or well it's a funny thing because when i had the first heart attack i was taking really good care of myself That's i was crazy. running all over yeah i lived in a town that had bridges and hills and I was running all over the place, feeling good. Yeah. But cardiologist told me later that just blame it on your parents. It's just a genetic thing yeah. where my heart doesn't, my body doesn't know how to break down cholesterol. Wow. And it just, just got to me. And at one point I just fell over dead. You know? And I have no recollection of that at all. None whatsoever. But my wife was there. And Thank God. Yeah. She, She'll never forget it. Wow. Wow. We're so yeah. glad that it, this, you came back. So you, it's almost like you went to the light and you came back. Yeah, but I, I didn't see any of that kind of stuff. Although I was in a, 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 an induced coma for a couple of weeks. And I did kind of live another life that's still wow. very in my mind. Yeah. Because, I, you know, I don't, I don't look at you and say, oh, yeah, candidate for a heart attack. I mean, it's like you take great care of yourself. You play a very physical instrument. You're thin. You know, which is really scary because it's kind of like a, can be like a silent killer. I mean, I'm going to be 52. I run six miles a day. And, you know, I, my girlfriend's like, you know, you could have a heart attack when you're running. I'm like, yeah, but got to go do it. 
here's what I said. Here's what I learned through all that. I learned that we never know what's brewing inside of our bodies. Right. That's why I believe we should go to a doctor on a regular basis and have our bodies checked by somebody who has studied the body, right? Right. Sure. That way, if there is something going on, it can be early, you know, but if we don't, we could feel great and a piece of plaque falls, blocks your artery. Next thing you know, you're dead. And that's why. That's that. Yeah. I mean, just simply don't get things. Yeah. I get the physical every year. I mean, some people like, uh, I think Kenny Aronoff does it every six months. And he's like a health freak, you know. Um, that's a lot twice a year, but I mean, at least once a year, go see what the heck is going on. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, man. And, well, and, we're... Take care of and take care of yourself. Diet and exercise. Diet and Try diet to eat reasonably and, and keep your body moving, right? Yeah. There you go. I work well, out five is... days. Well, so what is your workout, Jerry? What is it? What is a, what, what do you do? Is it like alternating cardio and weights or do you don't get that nerdy? You just like, as long as you're moving your body and burning calories and sweating. No, I, I go all out. I was seeing a personal trainer for quite a while. I started off three days a week, kicked my ass. I mean, he taught me so many, so many things how to properly move my body nice. and to make my body strong. And he's given me equipment for my home to use. So um, that's what I do. I do the cardio. I have an elliptical. I have weights. Um, I have exercises that he taught me. So five days a week, I get up in the morning. First thing I do is I work my ass off. Nice. And it just keeps me going the rest. I can't, I can't imagine my life without it. Yeah. Yeah. I got the, I got those uh, bow flex weights downstairs. They're adjustable. They'll fit in the, the bay of the bus. You got like a bench will fit in the bay of the bus. One yep. of those bow shoes, jump rope, some uh, stretchy bands for flexibility and mobility. I put on the compression socks. I sweat and I go out and I run my six miles. Might just run up the hills of the um, amphitheater. Boom, up and down, sprints. Wow. Um, I well, love it. Than me, man. Well, you know, yeah, the, yeah. you know, my thing is just like make the, the, the uh, venue your, um, your gym, you know. Um, this time of year, uh, Nashville, freezing. And like I missed my workout today. So I'm going to have to put on like four layers of clothes and go out there and just make it happen, man. Well, you play some venues that really allow that to happen. Yeah. You know, we, we play, sometimes we play one room with a little corner stage, you know, there's not too many stairs to go. Yeah, no, the people are packed in there and they are, they know every word to every song and they're passionate. They've been following you for 40 years. And that is an amazing thing, man. I'm so, very thankful. Yes, yes, yes. And, you know, uh, looking here, it's like you guys opened up in the, in, in your heyday for cheap trick, Iron Maiden, AC, DC, Pearl Jam, Molly Crew. And then folks like Pearl Jam and Alice in Change and Soundgarden, like said, these guys were grunge. They started grunge. Do you agree with that? Or did, do, you, do you find like, I think in one interview, uh, you were like, I don't know about that. I can hear it. Yeah. That, I mean, I, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, if, that, if that's how they feel, I'm honored by that. Right. But I've, you know, those guys to me, they're a whole different thing than what we are. We're just who we are. You know, if they, if we've inspired them or whatever it is we've done for them, I'm just thankful that they took whatever they saw in us and made it palatable to the world. Cause they surely did that. One thing that we somehow have never been able to do. No, so, well, you guys are, are so unique. You guys are like a snowflake. I mean, it's just one of a kind, you know, all those influences uh, coming together to create this unique thing, all singing like birds, harmonizing British invasion style. I mean, how do you guys write your music? Is there one person that's writing the lyrics and then you come, you all create arrangements and riffs or is it song to song? Is there a, is there a King's X writing process? It happens any way you can imagine, you know, somebody will come with a song and then we'll all put ourselves into it, which is the case with all songs, even if it's completely the same as the person wrote it. Yeah. But yeah, we all write songs. We all bring songs to the band. Um, and, you know, there might be a song without lyrics. So I'll write lyrics or Doug will write lyrics or Tyler. There's, there is no one way that we write a King's X song. Right. When we three get to 
we make the music that basically is presented to us by each of us and yeah. take it from there. It's incredible. And then how, what is your guys' philosophy on like rehearsals? So say you guys, you haven't we seen don't. each other in two, <laughs> you guys don't rehearse like, cause you haven't seen each other in two years. So someone says, Hey, we want you to come do this rock cruise. You know, you got to play a 45 minute set. Are you going to wing it? Is it just in your DNA? Well, I will say this, Rich. We have been winging it for quite a few years, yes. We won't see each other for months, and we'll fly to Sweden to do the Swedish Rock Fest, and that'll be the first time we've seen each other in months. Wow. And we're all hoping that we know the songs. And so far, it's worked out pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> but I think now, since the pandemic, since it's been so long, we have a new record coming out. I think we might actually have to rehearse a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so all three in a room uh the things that we've done in our rhythm section we have like a little process where like we'll hit each song like three times and then move on and then we'll run the whole set in order do you guys have like a a methodology that you or to rehearse or we have no methodology with us there's no rhyme or reason with anything we do other than the fact that we're going to get together, we're going to make this music, and we're going to do it the very best that we can. Incredible. And try to win. Incredible, man. Well, what a body of work. Some of the singles, Over My Head, It's Love, Black Flag, Dog Man, Pretend. Do you have some, some songs that you see on that set list, and they're coming up, and you get extra excited? Do you have like a couple that are just like, oh, yeah, man, I love to play this song? Yeah, I get excited when, when we... Uh, play the last song and he goes, yeah. So we can <laughs> leave the stage. Go have a glass of wine. Nice. Oh, you guys are. Huh? You guys are a wine. Are you guys a wine band? Uh, Ty and I love to drink red wine. Nice. And well, Doug hey, will probably, health benefits. Yeah. Doug will drink anything probably. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Man, what's that guy's workout regimen? What is he doing, man? Ah. <sighs> You'd have to ask him. I think he, he smokes a lot of weed. He's got like 12 abs, the guy. He's walking around with no shirt. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty impressive, man. Uh, 71 years old. What? That's incredible. Wow. No. Yeah. Man. I mean, I that's, don't know exactly what he does, but he, he takes care of himself. That's some genetic stuff right there. Now, talk about genetic. your... Um, Solo records. You have one in 2004, Come Somewhere, 2015, Love and Scars. And mm -hmm. I saw, heard in an interview somewhere, you're off the drums. You got some other guy back there. You're out doing the thing, doing the Mick Jagger. That's got to be fun, right? It was extreme fun. <laughs> I, I thought I had, a, I had a great band. Uh, the guy, one of the guitar players in, in my band, is D.A. Carcos, who we made the whole second record together. Love and Scars, we did the whole record together. And there's Andy Black Sugar on guitar, John Farley on bass, and Matt Farley on drums, and they all sang. And they're all great. And I felt like I was the weakest link in the band, but it was my band, and I'm the front. <laughs> wow. And I remember being very excited. The first show we did was at Arlene's Grocery in New York City. Mm. You familiar with that place? Haven't played it, but I've heard all about it. Yeah, just a small little place, but it's kind of iconic, and it's great. The place was completely packed, and uh, I was very, very nervous before we went on, thinking, oh, my God, I'm really going to do this. I'm going to stand up there, play a little bit of guitar, and just sing. And I remember we, we went into the first song, and it felt so good and so exciting. Does my, lang does, th does my language, does it matter what I say? Does it matter what words I use? You can use any words. Is you there, want. Are there any offensive words that I can use? Oh, you can use any word you want. Yeah, no. Okay. All, all, all. So I'm in the, we're in the middle of the first song, and I walk over to Dan, the guitar player, and I put my arm around him and said, I think I can motherfucking do this motherfucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. I thought, this is going to be great. And yeah. it just ended up being a great. It's a great. Show. Now, Maybe some more of that in the future? Because, I mean, you were uncomfortable for a brief moment, but then you did it. You fought through it, and you did it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the real t the difference between the men and the boys. <laughs> yeah. 
I would love to do it again. We're trying to put something together for the Love and Scars record, but we just couldn't couldn't make it happen. Right. Couldn't get all the logistics together and just you know how it is, just couldn't make it happen. Wanted yeah. to. Yeah. Now with your guys singing, what I really find the most impressive, I'm not a singing drummer, you know. I know Stan Lynch, I know Greg Bissonette, I know these guys that sing. It's like, wow, the coordination. It's like your fifth limb. And this drumming is so physical. And then you have to have that breath support for your tone. Mm -hmm. And then I can't even imagine back in the days if you guys weren't on in-ear monitors and you've got the floor wedges and you're trying to blend with each other and hear the pitch. Wild drum. How do you do it, man? Because, you know, you're not just playing boom, whack. That would be hard enough as it is, but you're playing massively syncopated do this, do God. Against all this <laughs> harmonizing, which blows my mind, man. Well, the only thing I can think, Rich, is I just can't think about it. Yeah. You know, because once I'm thinking about it, like with most things, then you start messing up. <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't really a, a, a singing drummer at first when we, when we put the band together. But then there are songs coming up with all these harmonies. They say, hey, you're going to have to sing. So I started singing, and at first it was very unnatural because there'd be one tempo going, but the vocals in another tempo or another thing happening, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So yeah. if, if you start thinking about that, oh, I'm playing this, here, oh, no, I got, oh, no, you're not going to be able to do it. So it just sort of gradually became second nature to me. So now I just don't think about it. I yeah. learn the parts I do. I play them and they just, I just, they just meld together. It becomes what it is. Yeah. If that makes sense. I love yeah. that. Well, I mean, you're definitely a testament to the, the, the natural raw talent that you've honed through the hard work of not you alone in a practice room, you on stage with a band being part of a, of a fabric mm -hmm. of a team, really, which is incredible. And I just can't believe that sound comes from three people. It's just epic. Just epic. Wow. Thanks, man. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, if I were to told you my favorite record is Dog Man, I don't know if you hear that a lot. Would you, would you think I'm crazy? Because that is just so heavy and thick and just the tempos are so plodding and nasty. I mean, it's like a great record to have like marital relations to. I don't know if you've heard that before. Great. <laughs> no, I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's really great, man. Is it? Do you? Is there another one that you're like, nah? I think this is the this is the Mona Lisa of our songbook. Well, I have to say, Rich, I just don't think like that. No, because each record to me is special in itself. Gotcha. And whenever we go into the record, that's the one that is my favorite. That's that's my favorite record at the time, and it happens with each one of them. Right now, I think our latest record is my favorite. Because okay, that's what yeah. we just did. So, so, yeah, they're all my favorite. And they're all my least favorite at the same time. <laughs> you know, because I was there. I, I know what I did. I know how I felt when I did it, all that stuff. You know, I have to get away from it to be able to really enjoy it. Or I do. Yeah. If that makes sense. Now, and when you guys are like dog man so much, that's not the reason I think you're crazy, no. There are other reasons that you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Just to still be in this business. Um, but it, let me say this real quick, though. But, but it seems like Dogman and Gretchen are like, they compete with each other to be people's favorites. Yeah. You know, has their favorite. But those two seem to be the ones that people most often, you know, are drawn to. Nine times out of ten, are you guys re the recording with the click track? Say that one more time. Like nine times out of 10, are you guys mostly recording with the click track going as far back as like, because I think they had clicks in 1980. Was it right from the get go you were working with clicks? Yep. Yeah. Every record we work with click. And sometimes we take the click off just to get a certain feel, but yeah, we play with the click. Yeah. No, I mean, hey, I, I, I'm never ashamed of it because it just makes it no, makes me either. either. Quality musicians, even if they're like world class experienced musicians, you're going to cut your time in half of getting that band to be tight because it's almost like having Will Ferrell or a percussionist in the band, you know, on the cowbell. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's a, and you know this too, but there's a small uh, 
window around the click that you can play that yeah. still keeps it there. And yeah. I think that's what made me feel a little bit more real at times. Yeah. Man, yeah. such thick grooves. I just don't know how you play those syncopated kick drum patterns and sing those harmonies all at the same time. I mean, that is just so impressive. We, it's just proof that we all have our, we have our lanes. We have these talents that we're given and we can capitalize on. I mean, it's just really great. It's so impressive and it's so fun to be talking to you about this. I um, saw this video with you jamming with Greg Bissonette at the 2017 NAMM <laughs> show. And, and, he, and you guys were like doing Beatles songs and Led Zeppelin songs. And I encourage everybody to go out there and check you out on that because it, you're not hidden behind lights and smoke and the whole rock and roll show. It's you in a, the Dixon drum booth and you could see how you move and your vibe and your energy and your chops and how you and Greg had the thing. That had to be a fun day. Oh, that was a very, very fun day. It's always fun to get together with Greg. You know Greg. Oh, I love just Greg. The, the nicest person in the world. Yes. The first time I met Greg, he was so nice. I thought, this guy has got to be humoring me because nobody's really that nice. But he really is. <laughs> He's consistent. I've never seen him in a bad mood. Ever. Yeah. Ever. I love Greg. I love yeah, Greg. Yeah. I, I, I do. He, was, with him. I, we, he, had a, he invited me over. We had two kits. And we just, just traded licks off at his house and just had a great time together. Always oh. a great time with Greg. Yeah. Love it. I had, I, I had him on the show and it was just yeah, nothing but positivity. Man. Yeah. And the whole, the whole Nam thing with Greg, we just decided to do that. They asked what you would do this. And so we went up there and just did it. I yeah. had no idea what we we're going to do. And that's what we did. It was just extreme fun. And he's so encouraging, right? Yes. Yes. Just, yeah. I, I always had a picture of Greg on my, you know, my practice room wall because he was the guy that could play with like Brazilian jazz with Tanya Maria, big band with Maynard Ferguson, hard rock with uh, David Lee Roth and then go and play on the soundtrack to friends. It's like, this is what you got to be able to do. I know it's always, it always amazes me and uh, baffles me and I'm flattered and honored and all of those things to think of somebody like Greg, who is like the drummer of drummers, right? He calls me his hero sometimes. Sure. And I mean, you can, you can hear the songs on his solo records. They're like King's X's <laughs> songs. <laughs> but I'm just a guy who plays drums the way I play, you know, and but he's, you know, you know what I'm saying. But you're too modest because in the process of playing in the same, with the same group of guys for four decades, you create this sonic identity, this sonic brand, this thing that people identify with. They, they, they meet each other. The people, I'm sure people fall in love. They get married at King's X show. They fight at King's X show. There's an visceral, emotional, emotional reaction to what you're throwing down and I, you know, I love the idea of being a, um, being a side man or being a session musician, but when you get to play with the same guys and you have that unspoken thing, it is so special. So, so let me ask you this. Yeah. How do you get paid, how do you get paid for all that stuff? <laughs> Since oh, we do the, all those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, me or the being a member of the same group of guys for, for no, me, me, you say we, we do all these things. People fight, they get married, they love. Oh, yeah. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do we get paid? <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. So, and you were with some comp different companies over the years. Um, were you with, um, you're with Dixon now, but I could have sworn that I've seen you play Yamaha drums and stuff mm -hmm. back in the day. Yep. Uh, I played Yamaha. Uh, I used Pearl for a while. Right, right. Uh, from there, I went to GMS, who are great. Great rock and roll drums. Yeah. Great, great people. I love them. And uh, I got a phone call one day from Greg, this and that, and said, hey, I'm playing these Dixon drums. I think you need to be on the team. I said, oh, man, I, 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 I play GMS, and I love those guys. I love, the, I love their product. I love them. He said, just try them out, man. I said, all right, I'll try them out. So they sent me a kit out in LA. We're playing the whiskey. And they sent me a kit. And as soon as I hit them, it was, it was, it was like I fell in love. And the other guys in the band turned around and said, whoa, what is happening here? They noticed a difference in yeah. the sound. And, and uh, so I said, all right, I'll do it. And they've been good to me. And it was very, very hard. I felt like I was breaking up with a, with a girlfriend when I left GMS. Yeah, they that's sad. 
That happened. <laughs> that was the right thing to do at the time. And I've been with awesome. him ever since. Yeah. I remember yeah. when Jim Ludig was, uh, you know, taking a head that up because he had that shop in St. Louis. And right. I, I think it <laughs> sold the shop. And then he was like, I'm going to, you know, represent this brand. And he, he was like, who, who should I get? I was like, you need to get somebody like a Greg Bissonette that plays all sorts of styles of music. Because then people see that you can play any style of music on these drums. And I'm glad oh, it wow. worked out. Yeah. So if you're the reason. So you I, got well, Greg in. I can't take credit for that. But <laughs> So you guys do have a new record coming out. Tell, tell us about that. Is that what you said? That it's. I, I did say that, yeah. yeah. We, uh, we recorded it in 2019 out in L.A. Mm -hmm. uh, Ty and I stayed at this beautiful house overlooking the Rose Bowl. Oh, wow. It was a great experience, beautiful time. Uh, I felt like we were all there for the same reason, all on the same page, uh, more so than we have been in probably many years. And I think we all are very happy with the record for yeah. the most part, you know? And that's going to drop at some point this year? I believe so, yeah. Okay. It will be this year. It will definitely Great. be this year. Great. If it's brother. not this year. <laughs> so any plans to try to do some touring this year? Or are you guys just going to wait for this uh, global mess to clean up? Well, uh, we've had, we had all last year booked and planned but of course that just fell apart and we also now have this year planned and booked um all the shows that we had to postpone we now are going to do them this year supposedly and we have all of september booked in europe and the uk and we'll have other shows before that. we have a cruise coming up the cruise to the edge um and other shows throughout the year so we're planning on doing that yeah and but we'll See what happens, you know. Yeah. Whenever the world allows, we will be there. Yeah. I don't know, Rich. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm going on a cruise, and and actually next week, I'm going on the ship rocked cruise. Just me playing in a band called the Stowaways. You familiar with that? No. Tell me about that. It, it's a very cool cruise. Uh, uh, I play in a band called the Stowaways, which is a band comprised of different members from different bands. And we do cover tunes. Really? And it's going to be awesome. Yeah, it's going to be really, really great. You know, I'm going to do some songs with um, Bumblefoot. You know, Bumblefoot? Nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I just recorded with him this past Sunday. I did a track with him. It's going to be really, really awesome. Nice. There you go. So that's what that is. That's what the Ship Rock Cruise is. And there's other bands too, like Steel Panther is going to be on the cruise. Lamb Ooh. of God. No, oh, I love Steel Panther. Oh yeah, why not mix your comedy with your music? I mean, come on. But there, but it's great music too. It, it is, right? yeah, yeah. Great I mean, the song. Great. One of my favorite songs to sing to my wife ever is a Steel Panther song. Which one is it? Can I? Can I? I'll tell you what the line is. My favorite line to sing to her is, "You're the only girl I like to screw when I'm not on the road." <laughs> The only girl that I like to screw when I'm not on the road. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I heard that they actually hired like uh, Comedy Central comedy writers to help them with some of their stuff because it's just hilarious. It really is. I don't know. I've talked to uh, Darren Sticks and he tells me they write it themselves. Wow. I mean, he maybe that's like that an urban say, legend. Maybe, maybe they do hire people. I don't know, but that's what he told me. Now, isn't that, what's his name? Sticks it in you or something like that? Was that his nickname? Or? Sticks, Sticks Zidinia. Sticks Zidinia. Sticks Zidinia. Incredible. Sticks I mean, that, that's incredible. Well, I love him. Jerry, this was just so overdue. I just wanted to, um, you know, see your face, let you know that uh, it was amazing to meet you all those decades ago. And I'm so glad that you are here and rocking. And just to let you know what a big influence you've been on to the drumming and music community. Wow. Thank you, Rich. It really means a lot to me, man. I'm always honored by that. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. Um, what, what, what is the best way for people to find you? Do you have your own website or do you do social media or are you just like to hide? No, I mean, you can find me very easily on social media. You just okay. type my name and you'll Google to find everything about me, Good. how to get in touch with everything. Very simple. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll put those in the show notes. And um, God, I hope you have fun on that cruise. 
Um, hope yeah, everything goes was, well for you guys this year and you get out there and play. Well, thanks, man. I, I hope the same. I'm a little hesitant yeah. because I haven't in a long time. And I, like I said, I love being home. But I'm sure once I get out there and start doing it, it's going to be, oh, yeah, this is great. This is what I do. All right. Exactly. Totally. It's exactly what you do. Well, we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. And hey, to all the listeners out there, we appreciate you guys. Please subscribe, share, rate, and review. It helps people find the show. We'll be here talking about all things music, motivation, and success. We really appreciate you. Come back for the good stuff. Jerry, really appreciate it, man. Have a great week, month, year. You do the same, Rich, and thank you very much. This has been The Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.